YTV Gazette, VTR, double one, double two, part one, take one. Street. No, not yet, he's not. Who then, a stringer? Arnold Jevons. What, 250 words a week too much for him? Not that. He's dead. Oh, sorry. When? Last night. Coronary thrombosis. He was 59. I thought he was older than that. No, 59. Are you worried? Yes. I've got to write his obituary. Why should that worry you? Can't think of anything suitable to say about him. He was a sweet little man, wasn't he? Yes, but a lousy theatre critic. No, it was in his nature to flatter the rep. Well, it's not in my nature to flatter him. Do you want to go to the theatre tonight? With you? Yeah, <laughs> sorry. Oh, I see, in place of Jevons. Do you fancy yourself as a dramatic critic? And what's all? Oh, the usual. A bedroom farce or Agatha Christie. Right first time. My wife's mother. Wholesome oh, family entertainment. I'll that a minute. That's what Jevons would have said. Oh, shall I follow suit? How do you mean? Shall I be kind? Shall I be helpful? Well, just be yourself. All right, I will. But be careful. Careful? Keep your head. <laughs> I say, old man, those are my wife's pyjamas you've got there. <laughs> yes, I had them off her. Eh? I mean, I borrowed them from her yesterday. <laughs> oh, what on earth for? Well, well, you see, I thought that if Phyllis was wearing Mabel's pyjamas and Mabel was wearing Phil's pyjamas, it would all come out in the wash. What one? The pyjamas? Yes. Yeah. No, I mean it would come to the same thing. I am sorry, well, man. No, I don't think you would. I think you better explain. I'll be bright this morning. All that campers last night. Very well, but I'm afraid you're in for a bit of a shock. You see, Mabel's mother's arriving. Stand by, Act One Curtain. <laughs> Oh, Bonetti is quite likely to come in during the night and climb into my mother, mother-in-law's bed. <laughs> <laughs> there she is now, coming up the drive. Keep your head, Bertie, and don't panic. We're in for a dirty night. <laughs> Well, well, he's good anyway. Uh, well, they're all very good. She's funny too. Yes. Well, I'm quite enjoying it. And the little one, he is good. Oh, they're all very good. In this sort of thing. Okay. Yes. Oh, Mr. Danvers. That's right. What's oh, it to be? Well, have I still time? Of course you have. Oh, gin and tonic, please. Elsie. Yes, Mr. Danvers. Gin and tonic for the young lady, please. Let's get out of here, shall we? There's more room. Shall we ask it? Ah, thank you. Shall we, um... Yeah, I, uh, I rang the Gazette. Oh, here we are. Good. And they told me uh, a young lady was coming along. Oh, good. Is your, uh, your seat all right? Oh, fine, thanks. <laughs> Arnold Jevons always sat in that seat, you know. The third row on the aisle. Oh, yes? Hmm. We shall miss him, you know. Everybody will. He was a very good friend to the rep. Yes. Yes. I gather it wasn't um, entirely unexpected. No. It could so easily have happened here. Tonight. I suppose so. Yeah, yeah. He's just the sort of quiet, inoffensive little man that does. Does die in public, I mean. <laughs> yes, I knew someone very like Arnold Jevons once, you know. He had a heart attack in the theatre, collapsed in the front row of the stores. Well, here. <laughs> Not here, years ago. Really? Mm. House was full, it was very hot, and halfway through the first act, he just slumped forward in his seat. Well, everybody turned to see what was going on, of course, and there was this 
this quiet little man struggling for his breath in front of 1,200 total strangers. Well, as his life ebbed away, so did the performance. One by one, the actors realised something was up, of course, but they couldn't see exactly what because of the, the glare from the footlights. Then, after a moment, one of them stepped forward and asked if there was a doctor in the house. And the gallery roared with laughter. Horrible. <laughs> yes, I know, but there's no way on earth of stopping a laugh on a line like that, you know. I mean, up in the gods, they had no idea what was going on. They couldn't possibly have done until the house lights came up and they could actually see. Go on. Uh, well, that's it. He, he died in the front row of the stalls. They carried him up the aisle, out of the theatre, and ten minutes later, they restarted the play. It happened to be a farce. Like tonight? Yeah. And by the first interval, they were all laughing their heads off. They must have had very strong stomachs. Oh, they had. Only a handful of them decided to call it a day and go home. And half of them asked for their money back at the box office. Come on, it's the second bell. You really must get back. Uh, yes. You don't want to miss any deal? Uh, no. <laughs> I think you're going to enjoy the second act. Uh, thanks for the drink. Our pleasure, Miss Jackson. Westdale rep must have scraped the barrel to find this one. It was a load of old chestnut. Limp and unfunny, Richard Morris is the wronged husband used every cheap trick in the book. <sighs> Nasty. And John Danvers' sloppy direction... It was embarrassingly bad. Well, I'll believe you, love, but I'll have to sub it, of course. No! I'm sorry, love. It's uncompromising because, as an evening in the theatre, there wasn't one redeeming feature. For me, anyway. And the audience? Some of them actually liked it. How many? Quite a lot. Half? More than half. Then I shall have to say so. You'll get more like Frank every day. Thanks. Good morning, Mr. Hadley. Good morning. Morning. Uh, he's not in. Uh, how long will he be? Well, he should be back now. Where is he, do you know? Arranging a funeral. Anyone we know? Uh, Arnold uh, Jevons. What, the critic? Yeah, if you like. I don't understand. Why is Frank Walters arranging his funeral? Well, there was no one else. Hasn't he got any family? No. Oh. Well, who takes over? Well, anyone we can get. What does it involve? The tending the reps first nights. Is that all? The odd interview. Whoever it is gets paid for it? Well, of course. How much? Well, a couple of guineas. Oh, it I depends see. who we dig up. Just pin money, hmm? Yeah. And in the meantime? Well, Sue got lumbered. Lumbered? Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Thank you. It's going to be toned down a bit. Yes, I should hope it is. But you know I've never read anything like that in my newspaper before. Why? I don't know. Were you just unlucky? How do you mean? What well, was last night out of the ordinary? It was dire. Yes, I don't mean that. I mean, was it typical of the rest Westdale repertoire? I think so. What do you mean you think so? Don't you know? Well, not positively, no. Well, then why not? Because last night was the first time I'd been to our rep for ah. some time. Well, if you don't care for the theatre, mightn't this be just a little bit prejudiced? But I do care for the theatre. I just don't like the sort of things our rep's putting on. Well, Mr Jevons was always very complimentary. Yes, he was. What about you? When did you last go to the rep? I can't remember. When I was a kid, I think. Puss in Boots at Christmas. Oh, and uh, once, about a year ago. And? Well, it was a matinee of ladies in retirement, and there they all were, sitting in the stalls with grey hair and hearing aids. And don't you think it's... About time the theatre attracted other sorts of people besides old ladies with nothing better to do. Well, the theatre isn't my province. Oh. It was, Mr Jevons. You're frightened of treading on your colleagues' toes, are you? No, if Mr Walters had asked for my opinion... Well, did you ever proffer it? No! No. Well, don't you think it's about time you did? What's this? The Westdale Rep. What do you think of it? I think it's lousy. Do you really? So do they. Now, why haven't you done anything about it? Would you like to come into my office? I'd rather you didn't play editor in my absence. Well, as it's my newspaper, I shall play exactly what I like. Fine, but not in my absence. Oh, I'm sorry. 
I'm sorry. They got my back up. I'm not a very good journalist, I'm afraid. How did it start? By my asking questions. Nothing wrong in that. No, but their answers were just so smug. They indicated Jevons wasn't up to scratch, and beyond that, they just wouldn't commit themselves. I know how they feel. I had to write his obituary. It's pointless speaking ill of the not particularly wicked dead. Mm -hmm. But the rap is in the doldrums. I'd say so. And Jevons? He knew. I don't understand. If he knew and did nothing about it, why did you keep him on? <laughs> but he won't like this. Never mind. Well, he had a following. He never offended a soul. Besides which, I knew he wasn't long for this world, okay. and that column meant a lot to him. Should still have been sacked, shouldn't he? I know. Sorry. Did he have any reason for pulling his punches? Absolutely none. He thought the rep was in enough trouble without his adding to it. What kind of trouble? Money trouble? That's right. Yes. What do they get from the rates? Three thousand. The Arts Council? Don't know. We'll find out then. If they're short of cash, we should say so. Well, the sort of players it's putting on at the moment is not likely to get any more. Well, then find out why it's being run the way it is. Attack it, you mean? If necessary, yes. <laughs> You do realise, don't you, that if we knock the rep too hard, we might end up closing the place. Which wouldn't do us or Westdale any good. It might be interpreted as a positive disservice to yes, the community. Well, you've been sitting on the fence for long enough, hasn't you? That hasn't done you or Westdale much good, has it? You want a full-scale inquiry into the state of our theatre, don't you? Yes, to make amends. To whom? To the town, for not keeping one of its assets up to scratch. All right. We'll find it difficult to redeem ourselves in 24 hours. Oh, please, don't put yourself out on my account. Just do a good job. Next week? Yes, that'll be fine. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Ghost be with you forevermore. You're sure it won't be out of your way? Quite sure. You weren't very kind to us yesterday. Can't be kind all the time. Have you found anybody to uh, replace Mr. Jevons yet? Yeah? No, not yet. Did I mention Sparrow to you? I don't think so. Stuart Sparrow, he used to be a scribe of a kind. He's retired now. Really? Yeah. He used to be a copywriter. He was a great theatre goer. The grand leads as well as the rep. He might be just the fellow you're looking for to succeed Mr. Jevons. Would he want the job? Oh, he'd jump at it. Does he need the money? Oh, hardly. He's comfortably off. I doubt whether he'd ask very much. Sounds too good to be true. Do you know him? Oh, quite well. Well, well enough. Shall I talk to him? If you like. He might be able to start in time for our next opening night. Tuesday week. I want to see the man first. Well, of course. I'll tell him to telephone you. So hurry. Uh, no hurry? <laughs> really? That's all, then. That's a two, please. Can I have a word with you, John? Is it important? It is, rather. They've got someone coming from the Gazette. This will take a you very found few us. minutes. Miss Jackson. Yes. You know Richard Morris. Hello. Hi. He's one of our stalwarts. Give us five minutes, Dick. Where will you be? Here, all right? Fine. Here. We'll see you in five minutes, then. Yeah. I didn't 
didn't really expect you, Miss Jackson. We haven't found a replacement for Mr. Jevons yet. I know. I, I meant after your review last week. And what about it? Well, it wasn't very complimentary, was it, to any of us? Didn't you have any qualms about coming here today? No. Should I have? I don't think I could show my face in the theatre under the circumstances. I mean, I was surprised. I, I thought the show picked up. I have to write what I think. And I'd rather not talk about it, if you don't mind. Sorry. What did you want to talk about? Well, I wondered if you'd give me a few facts about the rep generally. How long have you been here? Five years. <laughs> my wife and I have just taken out a mortgage on a house for the first time in our lives. And we've never been in one place long enough to do that before. No. <laughs> you know, when we first came here, Miss Jackson, this theatre was on its knees, financially speaking. Mm, I remember. But they were doing good plays. Not the sort of thing I saw on Tuesday night. I know, I know, but we must consolidate. At the box office. That's right. We, we can't do everything at once, you know. Oh, no, of course not. But you have been here five years. <laughs> Look, Miss Jackson, my audience just doesn't want Beckett and Leonescu every other week. Forgive me, but how do you know that? Well, they won't pay to see that kind of thing. Which audience is this, Mr Danvers? My regular patrons, the subscribers. And what about the rest of us? <laughs> You'll just have to bide your time, I'm afraid. As I'm doing. Look, I can get away with Shakespeare. As long as I stick to the play, the kids are doing for GCE and the like. But anything else, I have to sneak into the program. Surreptitiously. There's no other way. Then how often? Oh, one in four, or one in five, maybe. Less than that. Sometimes less. What about your actors? What do they feel about the sort of plays they have to do? Well, they realise it's all part of the job. It's good experience. Out-of-date thrillers? One artless comedy after another. They must get very bored. Not as bad as all that, you know, and it will get better. When? When we are financially sound. Which means more of the same thing in the meantime. Not necessarily. I'm doing sure the week after next. Hmm, Man and Superman. That's right. I trust you approve. Yes, I do. And I hope you'll give us your support. That depends on how well it's done. How is it shaping? It's early days yet, Miss Jackson. Tell me, Mr. Danvers, how much does your theatre get from the Arts Council? The Arts Council? Yes. They're none too generous to us, I gather. No, 3,000 isn't a lot, as Arts Council grants go. I say. Some civic theatres are getting ten times that amount. Mm. Of no comparison, though, we also get a grant from the Borough Council, you know. Which is another £3,000, isn't it? Oh, that's right. They generally match each other, pound for pound. Penny for penny. Miss Jackson, I do think you're being rather unfair. We can manage on 6000 a year. And without it? We'd be lost without it. Just coming. I think I've got all I need. Thank you. Mr. Morris has been with us for... How long have you been with us, Dick? Five years. <laughs> so, you see, Miss Jackson, we can't be all that bad. Can you, um, find your own way out? Oh, yes, I think so. Thank you, Mr. Danvers. Bye, Mr. Morris. Bye. Bye. Clear the iron. Well, what is it, Dick? I shall be leaving at the end of the month, John. Leaving? Yes. This write-up is the last straw. <laughs> oh, ignore it. She's just a kid trying to show off. She's absolutely dead right, John. That's why I'm getting out. Have you got some work? No. Then I don't understand. I didn't think you would. It doesn't matter. I'm sorry. had to get along as soon as possible. After all, you can't afford to be without a critic, can you? No. No. And I think I know what the people want. The people? Your readers. Nothing too big. 
Just enough to drum up interest in the rat and keep the box office ticking over. Yes. Bit of gossip every other week. Yes. Sort of thing Arnold used to do so well, God bless him. Did you know Mr. Jevons? Gracious, yes. There's nothing connected with the rep I don't know. And that includes the trustees. Yes. Do you think they're doing a good job? Who? Well, Mr. Danvers, the trustees. They certainly are. And you know why? Because they've got their feet on the ground. They know the only way to keep the rep going is to give the public what they want. The public want to enjoy themselves, don't they? They want to be entertained. John Danvers knows that. And the trustees? They see he doesn't forget. Why do you say that? Well, it's the job, isn't it? <laughs> well, thank you very much, Mr. Sparrow. I'll let you know as soon as I've made up my mind. Thank you, Mr. Walters. Thank you, Mr. Sparrow. Uh, as I said, I, I could start right yes, away. Yes, I won't forget. Yeah. Right, then. Goodbye, Mr. Sparrow. Uh, uh, goodbye, Mr. Walters. Where the hell did Danvers have to send him in on press day? Who was he? Friend of his. What do you want? Your job, love. What? Are you serious? Who on earth was that funny little man on the stairs? A sparrow. After my crumb. Danvers trying to sell me a friend of his as new theatre correspondent. Oh, he must be desperate. Yeah, I wonder why. Well, I think I know one good reason. Yeah, what's that? He's losing his leading man. Richard Morris. That's him. You sure? Mm-hmm. Richard Morris, do you know? Yes, I met him in the theatre last week with Danvers. He's good looking, but he's been with the rep since gone. He's quitting. Good for him. Who told you? Maxwell, he knows one of the backstage men. Well, no one told us. I'm not surprised. I'll go and see him. Ah, uh, no, you won't. I like it. I'll send Spence. She needs bringing down a peg. How's it coming? Well, so, sir. Is this the piece about Danvers? Hmm. Appleton cut it to shreds on grounds of defamation of character. We put it together again, mm -hmm. but it's not hot enough to make a really big splash. Well, maybe Spence will get something to add. Hello, Bill. How are things? OK, thanks. Haven't seen you around town lately? Well, we've got another kid, you know. It's not so easy to get out. Well, there's been damn all happening about the place anyway. Is that why you're leaving this place? Boredom. <sighs> well, it's as good a reason as any. Have a seat if you can find somewhere. Yeah, thanks. You're going to uh, try your luck in London, are you? Yeah, I suppose so. Why, don't you want the bright lights? Of course I do. I just don't much like London, that's all. What shall I say you're going to do next? Tell him. Anything special? No, nothing special. Uh, I'd rather not talk about it. Eh? You know, you're a superstitious lot. Yeah. Well, I'm glad you've got something to be superstitious about. I haven't. What? I haven't got anything lined up, not on the telly or anywhere else. I'm off to the Labour Exchange. Why didn't you say that I'm open to offers? Well, I would if I thought it would do any good. God forbid. Why are you quitting? I need a change. Yes? I'm fed up. I'm not happy here. And you're not to write any of that down. No? No. I can't afford to be branded as temperamental. I'm going to need another job. Well, I'll write pretty well what you want me to write. Yeah. Now you sound like poor old Arnold. No, about you leaving the ref, I think. I mean, but uh, we are doing an article uh, on the ref itself, and it's going to be pretty outspoken. So, if I cared to throw any mud, uh, you could include it in that? Well, if it's well-founded, I could, and in that way, it wouldn't spoil your image. <laughs> he won't do any good, you know. Danvers and the trustees and Jevons, they've all been scratching each other's backs for too long. Tell me about that, Mr Jevons. <sighs> well, he was part of the furniture, wasn't he? He knew all there was to know. <clears throat> he uh, kept it under his hat? Yes. He knew there was discontent in the company, but Danvers persuaded him it would all blow over. Of its own accord. Jevons believed it would. Danvers still does. You two uh, don't see eye to eye? Not anymore. And that's why you're off? <coughs> Five years in a place like this is an awful drag. It's too long. Well, why have you stuck it? Well, it's a kind of security, isn't it? Is the money good? The money's terrible. How terrible? Sixteen quid a week. Well, why then? <sighs> you're going to think me very naive. Well, I think all actors are very naive. Well, I thought things were going to improve. I've been told that they would week after week after week, ever since I've been here. By John Danvers. Look, uh, why don't you ask me about my favourite role or something? Sure. I can't remember. 
Twenty odd plays a year for five bloody years, and I can't even remember one I liked very much. How's that? Well, you know the sort of, sort of stuff we've been doing. What, lightweight? You could call it that. It's death for the actors. Well, you're alive and kicking. Yeah, but I got so lazy. This sort of rubbish we do has that effect. It's too easy after a while. You simply milk the house for whatever it's worth and then go out and get drunk. The crunch comes, of course, is when those bastards upstairs slip something special into the repertoire. Some moderately intelligent play, and then you fall flat on your face. Well, whose fault's that? Not entirely our own. It's not easy, you know, to create a character. I mean a character of any depth or subtlety after churning out this two-dimensional cardboard rubbish month after month to play for real after using all the tricks in the book to get cheap laughs. It just caught in a vicious circle. Once in a blue moon, Danvers puts on something worthwhile. We make a porridge of it, the public stays away. So we go back to the usual tripe until Danvers is ready to take the plunge again. You sound bitter. Are you really surprised, Bill? I've had five years of promises from Mr John Danvers. Better plays, better parts, and on and on we go with the same old tat. I sometimes think I'm a worse actor now than when I got here. I've wasted five whole years, and all I've got to look forward to now are... 30 years of mediocrity. Half an hour, please. Well, haven't you got any sympathy for Danvers? Oh, sympathy, perhaps, but no respect. He's a man without courage. What kind of courage? Courage enough to stop catering for the lowest common denominator and present good plays often. Man and Superman. Oh, <laughs> you know what that's in aid of, don't you? No. Them, the Arts Council. One of their number is due next week. To take a look round, he said. Just that? No, Danvers is asking for a larger grant, and this bloke's coming to see for himself whether the rep deserves it or not. Is that his decision? No, committees. This bloke will make a report. When's our man from the Arts Council due? A week today. He'll see the show and then go back the next day with Sue's review to read on the train. I wonder Danvers wanted his friend Sparrow to start right away. I don't want to spoil anyone's fun, but shouldn't we be putting the paper to bed? I've done a nothing bit on Richard Morris taking leave of the rep. Let's have it. It's only chit-chat. Most of what he told me about the rep was off the record, and he painted a very different picture from the one Danvers painted. No, I'm bad. Can you use it without mentioning his name? Yes. Enough to fill this? Sure, but I warn you, it's pretty strong stuff. Well, I'll take a chance. We'll be quick. They're ready to go downstairs. Just a minute. I'm sorry, but I think you'd better put all this on ice. You do? Yes. What about Sue's interview with Danvers? That too. But I... And publish the whole thing next week to coincide with the Arts Council visit. But if I did that, I could lose them their grant altogether. Well, you'll just have to risk that, won't you? Excuse us. Is this what you call making amends to Westdale? Yes, yes, I think it is. Look, Jevon sat on the tooth for years. Now let's sit on it for one more week and even up the score. Well, that's one way of looking at All it. All right, then let's look at it another way. Tell me this, does this feature have your blessing? Well, you know it has. Does it really? Is it topical this week? Not really. No. Is it effective this week? Not very? No. Next week? I thought we agreed you weren't a very good journalist. Bill, you've got half an hour to fill the whole of page eight. Well, what with, for God's sake? Absolutely anything except the bloody rep. Doris, oh. has the Gazette come yet? Oh, yes, Mr. Danvers. Well, let me have it. Uh, Mr. Morris is looking at it. But it's my copy, Doris. Yes, sir. This isn't a lending library. No, sir. It's all right, I've finished with a bloody rag. Oh. Uh, what's it say? See for yourself. But I don't understand. My mother says the Gazette doesn't know a good show when it sees one. I am sorry. There's nothing here. Nothing? Well, nothing about us except for a very nice bit about Mr Morris leaving us. Otherwise, nothing by that girl. Oh, well, that's all right then, isn't it? You can stop worrying now. Until next Friday, I can. My mother says George Bernard Shaw's ever so witty. She says she knows it's going to be a lovely show. I wish your mother wrote for the Gazette, Doris. And sat on the Arts Council. Oh, I'm sure she would if they asked her, Mr Danvers.
Well, don't overdo it, love. Good night. Good night. Your theatre tickets. I shall only need one. Well, the other's for your chaperone. What are you talking about? You're going on the arm of our proprietor. James? Mr. Hadley. It was his idea. Well? I wish it were better. Oh. I could write a more glowing review. And then perhaps I'd be allowed out on my own. Ah, uh, that was Walter's idea, actually. He said it was yours. Have you seen this play before, have you? No, but I read it at school. Uh-huh. I have twice. Were they good productions? Yes, yes, they were. At least I thought they were. But Shaw needs to be played with panache. This lot are just falling over themselves to be funny. Mm, that's their style. Well, it's the wrong style, I'm afraid. Oh, is that your uncle over there? Oh, uh, yes, that is. Oh, uh, blast. He's seen us. Now we're for it. I think he's rather a dish. Sorry to hear that, Mr. Danvers. I think she's rather a dish. I'm sure you're right. Surprised to see her with my nephew, though. Thought she got better sense. Perhaps I'd better go over and say hello. Yes, yes, of course. Mm. Matter of fact, I think he's the director of this place, aren't you? I'm a trustee, actually. Ah. Evening, Susan. Evening, James. You enjoying the play? No, I am not. Miss Jackson's on duty, so she's not allowed to say. Did she tell you? Ah, uh, I'm a boss. Never mind what I think. What about you, Colonel? I think it's bloody awful. <laughs> I thought you might. I knew Shaw. Really? Should be played with panache. We both went to the same school, I'm afraid. What are you muttering about? Nothing, Uncle. What about Mr. Danvers? Is he happy with the way things are going? Well, I can't tell you that. He's the eternal optimist, or pretends to be. Well, he needs to be. It's sad, you know. The man's changed. Five years ago, he could have produced this play blindfold and made a first-class job of it. What's gone wrong? Well, I don't know. The place is getting him down, I suppose, or vice versa. Why do you keep him off? My fellow trustees don't agree with me. They're happy as long as we stay out of the red. And you're the only enlightened one among them, are you? Yes, that's right, James. It surprises you, doesn't it? We've got a surprise for you too, Colonel. Have you indeed? What is it? A revolution. Uh, revolution? Mm. I'll tell you about it afterwards. What about me? I'll take you home first. Well, can't I join the fun? A revolution I have in mind is not going to be fun. She needed an early night. Oh, come off it. What do you mean? Oh, forget it, Frank. It doesn't matter. Are you after this wretched man's head? That is no concern of yours. Well, you've made it my concern. You've goaded me into compiling a highly critical report of the rep. I want to know why. I told you why the other day. You told me you owed it to Weston. Well, we do. And now you want Davin sacked. In the light of your report, yes. Which on Friday will reach 40,000 readers. So why this private vendetta against Danvers? Why can't you leave it to the Gazette? Because if I leave it to the Gazette, it'll take too long. You've got to open your columns, offer them the right to reply, Danvers. Those idiot trustees. Your uncle accepted? My uncle accepted, yes. But what's wrong with a long-term campaign? Nothing, except the theatre will be destroyed long before Danvers gives in and gets out. <sighs> All right, I take your point. Thank you, and I have another suggestion to make. Yes. You run your campaign and leave me to run mine. And never the twain. That's it. You print what you like, when you like. And I won't set foot in this office till either you, I, or Danvers have come out on top. But that'll take months. Do you want to bet? Mr. Vernon, Arts Council. Well, that's right. Well, I'm Susan Jackson from the Gazette. Mm. Well, I know all about you, Miss Jackson. I have nothing to say. A uh, taxi! She was lying in wait for me, just as you said she would be. I did as you asked. Thank you. She seemed a nice enough sort of girl. Oh, I'm sure she is. I just don't think she understands our problem. I mean, she came to see me the other day, for example, and I don't think she took in one word I was saying to her. It was all right there. They didn't uh, print the interview. <laughs> One beginners, please. Shall we go? Hmm. I've got you the best seat in the house. Thank you. Bill. Take that down to the stern. Apologize. Say we've nothing to add after all. 
Didn't you get anything out of the Arts Council? No, nothing. Well, if they kick up a fuss, refer them to Madam here. Right. I'm sorry. Ah, don't fret. There's nothing there to put the fear of God into poor old Danvers. I'd rather it cause him to buck his ideas mm, up. After five years, I doubt it. We might have a go. Oh, he might. If our proprietor will give him a chance. Oh, she's got him for this show as well, has she? Well, I think she has. I, I, I shan't know until tomorrow. Mm, the Gazette comes out on Friday, doesn't it? Mm. What do you think, Mr. Vernon? Well, I've only seen half of it. What do I mean about things in general? Well, we'll talk it over tomorrow. Oh. Danvers, phone. Oh, the gentleman. Oh, it's for you. London? No, sir, it's a local call. Funny. Andrew Vernon speaking. Hello, Mr. Vernon. My name's James Hadley. Oh, yes? I've just been talking to a great friend of yours in London, Julian Fraser, from my old department at the Ministry. Julian Fraser? Oh, yes, economic planning. Does he? Oh, we do belong to the same club. Well, he asked me to look after you while you're up here in Yorkshire. I wonder if you'd care to dine with me tonight. I don't live very far away. I'm uh, afraid I'm rather tied up this evening. Oh, what a pity. How about breakfast tomorrow morning? Breakfast? Yes. Say, 8.30, can you make that? Well, I suppose I could. Good. I'll look forward to seeing you. I'll send Maxwell to pick you up. You are at the Victoria, right? Uh, yes. Uh, Maxwell? I sure sir. Oh, I see. He also cooks the breakfast. Uh. Well, I'll look forward to seeing you. Oh, thank you very much, Mr. Not at all. Goodbye, Mr. Vernon. That's that. I must be off. You, uh, you wouldn't care to join us for breakfast tomorrow morning? No, thank you, James. <laughs> I have no more appetite for your methods of extracting information than I have for your ridiculous breakfast. You won't need my help to butter him up. Mm. So I'll go home and sit by the telephone. Awaiting the call to action? Well, that depends on the results of your recce. <laughs> You're a hypocrite, Uncle. We both are. You can't escape from the telephone anywhere, can you? Not the uh, Gazette. No, just a friend of an acquaintance. Curtain's going up, sir. I must go. Yes, you mustn't miss my last act, Mr. Vernon. I have no intention of missing your last act, Mr. Danvers. Kippers? Uh, yes, please. How many? How many kippers? Mm. Oh, just the one, thank you. One. Found something interesting, have you? There's a piece about the rep. Oh, yes, about your tour of inspection, is it? No, not about that. I haven't had time to look at it myself, I'm afraid. Why, oh, should? It's remarkably frank. Anything else? Mm. With the kippers? Oh, good gracious, no. You know, I'm not used to this sort of breakfast. I really shouldn't be eating it now. Really? Why shouldn't you? I'm here under false pretenses. <laughs> are you? Hmm. Julian Fraser and I are only on nodding terms at the club. Good Lord. I hardly know him. Well, Julian's a great one for organising other people, you know. Is he? Yeah. you better tell me what you're up to these days. Hmm? Uh, he's bound to ask if I see him in the club. Ah, uh, oh, my estate takes up most of my time. Mm, I bet it does. And then I have one or two other interests. Mm, you're kept pretty busy, then. Oh, yes, yes, I am. I haven't time to keep up with things as I should, I'm afraid. Oh, what sort of thing? Ooh, the local theatre, for instance. Oh. You should read your local paper. What, the Gazette? Hmm, there. Aye, well, you just seem to be gunning for the chap who runs the place, isn't he? Hmm, don't they? How? Oh, I thought he was rather popular. What's his name? John Danvers? Yes, that's hmm. him. Isn't he? Do you think I could have another cup of coffee? Yes, yes, of course. I heard the other day that he, um, he's losing his leading man. I don't know why. Doesn't get on with Danvers, I suppose. Possibly. Yeah. Well, you'll be down there having a look. What do you think? About this chap Danvers, the way he's running the place, I mean. My report on the local Repture Theatre in Westdale must remain strictly confidential. Ah, yes, of course. I was just curious. Uh, about what? About the rumours that the Arts Council's got no faith in Danvers, and that if he were replaced by a more progressive man, the rep might get a bigger grant. <laughs> and I always say just now, you haven't got time to keep up with everything in Westdale. Oh, I simply can't. You seem to be remarkably well informed about mm. the local theatre. No, not well informed, just troubled by rumours that I hope I can discredit. 
Hmm. Can one discredit these rumours? What rumours? That the Arts Council would smile more warmly on the theatre if Danvers went. And that if he stays, they might lose the grant and be forced to close down altogether. No comment. And I'm sure you're accustomed to that sort of reply, Mr Hadley. Me? Being a newspaper proprietor. That kipper was excellent. I start rehearsing at ten. You'll have to excuse me, Mr Spence. Well, just tell me how many, Mr Danvers. I can't tell you how many. Well, I heard it was half the company. Oh, now you're exaggerating. But there has been a revolt. <coughs> no, not a revolt. Well, what then? I'm afraid I can't comment. Well, at least tell me what you're going to do about it. I'm not going to do anything. Well, not now. I shall, I shall wait until they've calmed down. Then I'll talk to them. Well, I'd like to speak with them. What about? No reasons for leaving. They'll be rehearsing all day. Well, that's all right, because I've got all week. Mr Spence. Yes? Will you do me a favour? Yes. Please leave my cast alone for a few days. So I've had a chance to reason with them. Well, I'll certainly talk to Mr Walters. Thank you. As you've said, you've got a whole week. Yes. Oh, by the way, uh, have you seen uh, today's Gazette? No, I was just on my way to the box office to collect it when you... When I barged in. <laughs> yes. I'm sorry. Uh, <clears throat> it's page uh, eight. Goodbye, Mr Davis. Goodbye. Have you seen Hadley? Not a peep. You're late. No, I've been round to the theatre. Oh, go on. Well, something I heard in the pub last night about a mass walkout. Well, not that exactly, but uh, a number of the um, actors asking for their cards. Actually, it turned out to be quite funny. Funny? Well, ironic then. What was it? You said you heard last night? No, before. But we didn't put anything in the paper about the rep last week. No, no. Uh... So how can we be said to have played a part in the walkout? I don't understand. Well, if you listen, I'll tell you. Richard Morris led them to believe that we were going to sound off about the rep's shortcomings. And then when we didn't run the feature, after all, word spread that we were in Danvers' pocket again, and so they decided to make their own protest. By resigning? Quite. <laughs> Poor old Danvers. Whether we write about him or not, he still gets it in the neck. And Hatley hasn't even started yet. Uncle, it's James. Well? It doesn't look as though you're going to get your increased grant, I'm afraid. I didn't really expect us to. Well, you're more likely to lose it altogether. That'll mean the end of the theatre in Westdale. Well, that's what he implied. Now, I think it's about time you asked for a meeting of the Board of Trustees. All right, but do you think it'll do any good? I think it will, if you do as I say. I'm coming round. I thought you might be. I fear that's all I can tell you as things stand. Thank you for being so frank. Oh, I'm sorry I can't be more encouraging, but as I said, I only speak for myself. The committee may view things very differently. Whatever their decision, you and your trustees should hear in a couple of months. I'm afraid I must go or I shall miss my train. Ah. Goodbye, Mr. Uh, Danvers. Bye, Mr. Vernon. Westdale well, Rep, John Danvers speaking. Colonel, what can I do for you? I'm sorry, Miss Jackson, but I never speak to the press. I'll have to leave you during the intervals, if you don't mind. They like to see me around during Saturday matinees. Right, let's get cracking. Why are we here for a start? Well, uh, uh, Colonel Chamberlain felt that we should reply to the Gazette's attack on us. I'm sure we can leave that to you, Mr Danvers. <laughs> well, it may not be that I easy. agree with the Gazette, but then you know my views. We do, and they're as scatty as the Gazette. <laughs> <laughs> I never understood it. You, you're such a practical chap in every other respect. <laughs> I don't see anything impractical in wanting to put on better stuff. Well, we'd lose money. That's impractical for a start. Yes, that's true, I'm afraid. We simply can't afford such a policy at this moment. No. The... Uh, Attendance figures for the current production prove that. Let's have a look. Well, they're not very good, I'm sorry to say. That's the Gazette's fault, not yours, Mr Danvers. Well, be that as it may, they do go to show that the public's still not ready for the kind of theatre we'd all like to give them. 
Well, if that means our continuing to present rubbish, I don't want to be a guardian, I don't want to be a trustee anymore. I'm sure Mr Danvers won't give us rubbish, Colonel. After all, man and superman. Oh, that was to benefit Mr Vernon, to impress the Arts Council. Was he impressed? Mr Danvers. And Mr Vernon thought we may not get our increase. Oh, dear. Go on, Danvers. Well, he said we may lose our grant altogether. Oh, uh, the Arts Council may not act on his report. Eh? He stressed as much. Nevertheless, the report's bound to carry some weight. Not necessarily. And of course it will. What about Richard Morris leaving? <laughs> we can't keep them here when they get better offers from London. Oh, what better offers? Well, he's not irreplaceable, you know. Nobody is. You know as well as I do why he's going and half the company with him. Now, are you going to tell the trustees or are you going to wait till they get it secondhand from next week's copy of the Gazette? Is this a fact? Well, some of our actors are a little unsettled. But they'll come down. They'll have to for their own sakes. And I'll talk to them. I'll show them these figures and then they'll realise exactly what we're up against. Your figures aren't going to change their opinion of us and the way we run this theatre. They're not going to change anyone's opinions anymore. Not mine, not the Gazette, and certainly not the Arts Council. They've never cut our grant before. They've never increased it either. But what on earth do you want me to say? Say what you like, as long as it's frank. Well, the interval's coming up. You'll, uh, you'll have to excuse me. Of course. Uh, you will be back. Yes, back in ten minutes. Before you run off, Mr. Danvers. Yes? What odds would you give on our getting any kind of support from Arts Council next year? We may get something. Yeah, but what odds? I'm not a betting man. Uh, pretty slim. Yes? Thank you. That's what I wanted to know. Did you have to bully the poor man like that? After all, he's doing his best. I know I'm sorry. If the Colonel hadn't laced into Danvers like that, we'd never have known the mess we was in now. We can always go cap in hand to the Town Council. Look, love, if Arts Council say we're not worth a subsidy, were the Town Council to disagree? Why, they might even stop their support too. Oh, well, they wouldn't do that. I'm on the Town Council, and I'm damn sure they would. Well, I think we'd best discuss ways of winding up the rep. That may not be necessary. I have been approached by someone who's willing to make good the Arts Council grant, should they cut it. If need be, to the tune of £3,000. They'll be out for the interval in a couple of minutes, Mr Danvers. Same again, please, Elsie. And who is this anonymous benefactor? He asked me not to divulge his name unless the offer was accepted. And if we reject it? Oh, then he prefers to remain anonymous. Well, of course we're not going to reject it. Hey, we can't afford to. What does he want? He'd like to become a trustee. Well, we could co-opt him, simply enough. Anything else? No, that's his only condition. Well, what are we waiting for? We should know who he is. Well, yes, of course. But are we all agreed in principle? Well, are we? I am. Um, yes. Uh, yeah. Very well, then. He is my nephew. What, young Hadley? That's right. <laughs> no wonder you wanted Danvers out of the road. <laughs> I wanted to spare him embarrassment. Well, of course, he'll have to resign. No. I mean, why? Look, class, we can do without Danvers, but we can't do without Hadley's money. It's as simple as that. Well, Danvers doesn't have to resign, you know. By God, I wouldn't stay if I were him, would you, Colonel? No, I would not. What a pity. <laughs> Poor Mr. Danvers. So sorry. Hope I haven't missed anything important. Morning. 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 We were expecting you. Oh, yes. Well, Danvers is going. Yeah, we heard. I thought you'd like to see his letter of resignation. Oh, that bit about my generosity, that's not for publication. No? Well, at least not yet. Well, it's very conciliatory, isn't it? Yes, very. You know, I want to go to town on you this week. <laughs> on behalf of Danvers? Yes. Three thousand pounds. Oh, that's a lot of money. Yeah, it is, isn't it? You know, I don't get it. You complain about my telephone bill, you refuse Bill Spencer use of a car, one of the linotype machines is on its last legs and you won't replace it. Yet you'll fritter away £3,000 on a theatre that until last week you never even stepped foot in. 
But I'm not frittering anything away. You've got your name down for 3,000. Well, they're not going to get it. At least I hope they're not. Well, go on. My offer stands if the Arts Council cuts their grant. Well, they won't. You now the Danvers is going, they're more likely to increase it. Are you sure? No, but it's a pretty good bet. What makes you think so? Two things. One, an inspired rumour I put to Vernon. Breakfast, which he really couldn't deny. What? That the Arts Council would smile with relief if Danvers went. And second? An invitation that my uncle has just sent with the rest of his trustees to the Arts Council. Invitation? Mm. For them to select the next director of the Rep themselves. Well, I don't think they'll let him go down with a sinking ship now, do you? You think the Arts Council will still cough up when they hear about your gamble? Well, they mustn't hear about it. Well, Danvers might tell them. No, never. Best thing he can do is get out of town as quickly and quietly as possible. That way he might just get another theatre. Danvers may leave quietly, but somebody's bound to want to know why. And then my presence on the board of the rep might embarrass the Gazette. It would embarrass the Gazette. Oh, dear, what a pity. Well, perhaps you could find me a part-time job here, could you? Say, one night a week. Third row, on the aisle. It might be amusing. Thank you.